Hi, I'm Sophie Noble. I'm the National Events Manager for the Retail Crew. Welcome to our training induction video um, on the in-store demonstration program for Coles Butcher 2011. So in this video we're going to cover a multitude of things, so from arriving to the store and signing in, to setting up your demonstration, to actually performing the demonstration and cooking, um, and to packing up at the end. So I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions at all regarding this video, you can contact your state team leader. Uh, and also we'll be training at a state near you very soon, so I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Arrive at store at least five minutes before your shift, allowing plenty of time to park your car and unload the equipment into a trolley. Sign in using the visitor's book located at the service desk. Ensure you have the following documentation as a coal staff member can ask to view them at any time. Work method statement. Material safety data sheet. Coles induction card. Ask at the service desk for the department manager. Negotiate with them a location in store where you can set up the demonstration unit close to the product and where there is access to power. Record the quantity of stock on shelf before your demonstration. Make sure you ask the department manager if there is any additional stock stored elsewhere that needs to be added to the starting stock count. Purchase sample stock according to the ingredients listed on your product brief. For all sample stock purchases, you'll receive the correct amount of money by electronic funds transfer in advance each week. Please retain your receipts as you'll need to send these back weekly to your retail crew account manager by fax, post or email scan. All purchases made in store need to be check sealed by a coal staff member at the service desk before use. For stores that do not use a check seal sticker, make sure you retain your receipt for proof of purchase. Remove the unit from the carry case. Place the base shelf on the ground, flat side down, the pointed end facing the front. Remove the body of the unit. Push the plastic into the correct shape to fit into the bottom shelf. Place each side in by lightly stepping on the base piece and push down on each side to lock into position. Next, take out the shelving piece. Insert the shelf into the middle of the unit with the flat side facing you. The shelf will slide into the slots on the side. Take out the top of the unit and place it on top. The body of the unit should now be locked securely into the base and the top. Place the flagpole into the unit and add the header board, then extend. Make sure it's high enough to accommodate tall people. Place a bin with a liner in front on the side of the unit. Finish by unloading your kit into the unit shelving. And clean the unit with spray and check to make sure the unit looks neat and tidy. Please refer to your product brief for all details on cooking method, time, equipment to be used preparation and recommended serving method. Remember, a hairnet and food handling gloves must be worn at all times. Importantly, greet every customer that approaches your unit. Remember to smile and encourage them to try your product. <laughs> Yeah, like, good boy, thank you. 
they're Coles Finest brand, they're yep. gluten free, and they're just they're found on this cabinet just on the other side of the wall. They're quite good, aren't they? On the completion of each shift, ensure you wipe down your unit thoroughly of food scraps and spills. Report to the department manager prior to leaving the store and ask for any feedback. Sign out of the visitor's book upon leaving the store. I'm here with Farah, who was the number one salesperson on the Coles Butcher trial program last year. So congratulations for that. Thank Excellent you. Excellent job. I thought Farah was the best person to come and talk to us about active selling, what that means to, um, to Farah, what that means to the program, and how you can do that um, while you're in store. So Farah, if I was to ask you that question, um, active selling, what does it mean to you? Okay, starting off, it really means knowing your product. You've got to know what you're selling, what it tastes like, how much it is, what you can do with it, what you can't do with it, what you know whether it's gluten free. You just got to really know it back to front. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to know to be you know you've got to be out there. You've got to be confident. You've got to be happy. You've got to be smiling. You know it's about asking every single person that walks past. I mean it's a numbers game. If you ask every person that walks past, you're going to get positive feedback and get people trying the product and therefore buying the product. Mm -hmm. um, people with kids are always good to you know talk to as well because yep. whilst we don't sell to kids. You can be guaranteed that if kids like what you're what you're selling, what you've got, parents that the parents are going to buy it. They're yeah. going to know want to know what recipe it is, how to prepare it, all that type of stuff. Yeah. So it's just really about knowing, you know, know, knowing your products, knowing the prices, and then just getting out there. Yeah. So anything else that we can do in store to ensure that um, we can perform our guests um, perform best sales that we can. So location. Yep, you've always got to be mindful. If you can get a choice of location, you need to just step back for a couple of minutes and look where the traffic's going. So hopefully there's you know a few people in store. If you can see where most traffic's going and try and set yourself up in amongst that, then you're going to be better off. There's no point being off in a corner right next to the meat if no one's walking down there. Yep. You're better off to step away. Um, of course, being close to the product has really good advantages as well. So if your product's in a good spot, yep. try and locate yourself close to it because it does it's very helpful. Yep, certainly. And uh, with the recipes, do you ever trial them at home before you come and do them in the store? Yep, I quite often have a look what we're doing and then yeah, try them, see what see what the recipe is, see if there's any kinks that need to be worked out because sometimes you know you, you do need to work it out yourself. Particularly, we've got such a small space, you need to know. How are you going to do it? You know, what's on the bench, what's under the bench, what you need to cook, how long it needs to be cooked for, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And I've got kids too, so I can always gauge by my kids yeah. what props for a good reaction or bad reaction I'm going to get. Yeah. And it's always good too that if you're not cooking the recipe we're doing, to try other things, because sure. then you can always recommend. I mean, if you can recommend something and speak from your heart, yep. you know other people are going to want to try it too. Beautiful. So it's about recommending to other people other things that um, may not be what we're preparing, but recipe ideas they can try with the same Absolutely. product at home. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Recipe ideas are a really good idea. Fantastic. Um, recipe anything, cards as anything well. Anything that appeals to the kids, uh, the mum's going to love. Yep. I know that's tough sometimes. Yep. Yeah. Kids, budget ideas too. So you might have a, a real gourmet version um, of something that we're cooking. We might yeah. be using premium products or premium ideas. And then kicking that back just a little bit and using something that's not quite so pricey incorporate into more of a family budget. That's always a good idea to have in your head with the products we're using as well. Fantastic. So how would you overcome, if people come up and you know they might be a little bit reluctant to try as anyway, or methods that you use to overcome that, those objections? Yeah, look, talk, talk about yourself, or talk about a friend, or talk about your family, oh, you know, as in, uh, my, you know, my kids just tried it, and they're, you know, they're a bit fussy, but they gave it a go, and they end up liking it. You, you can't make anyone try it if they don't like it, but you can always, if they're unsure, you can, be confident and talk about other people trying it and a lot of people will then sort of give it a go. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess the whole the aim of this program is we aren't the Coles ambassadors, so we are representative of the Coles butcher um, and the meat department ourselves. So being able to um, yeah, with that believe in, in the product, I think, is very important. Believing in the product, and because we're Coles ambassadors, I so find because you've got Coles written all over you and your unit, people will come up to you and ask you questions completely unrelated to what we're doing, mm -hmm. but they're equally as important to be able to answer and be polite and look after the customers because you'll find you get customers coming back week after week after week. Yeah. Um, you know, just if you can have a vague idea of the layout of your store and know where you know things are that's always really helpful because people will then come to you try your recipe and yeah. then 
move on. I mean, you know, you get a lot of repeat repeat business, so it's really important to look after the people around you. Because it is relationship building as well, isn't it? It, it certainly is. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. No problem. Good thank you. Good luck with the, uh, the rollout for this year. I'm sure that um, we'll see great things again from you. So thank you. Thank you very much for us.